American presidential elections never come without drama and heightened tension. And this year was no different, especially when it emerged that the two candidates, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, stayed neck and neck for most of the vote counting. At last, Biden's count started to excel, bringing along a bigger gap between him and Trump. But then the accusations of vote rigging became louder. Disputes were declared and some states and voting stations had to recount. All over the world, the tension mounted for days and then broke all at once, with more and more stations calling the election after the CNN. CNN projects Joseph R. Biden Jr. is elected the 46th president of the United States. This is a Fox News special report. Can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden will win Pennsylvania and Nevada, putting him over the 270 electoral votes he needs to become the 46th president of the United States. But even then, the world had to wait another 17 days for just an inkling of an admission of defeat from Trump in the form of the General Services Administration that informed President-elect Joe Biden that the Trump administration is ready to begin the formal transition process. Trump himself, he has not said a word yet, except for a tweet stating that he will not accept defeat. President-elect Joe Biden then unveiled a slate of top foreign policy and national security picks, including the first woman to lead the U.S. intelligence community and the first Latino to helm the Department of Homeland Security. Most of the names on the slate hail from the Obama administration. And one of the more well-known names is that of former presidential hopeful John Kerry, who will head Biden's turnaround strategy for America's climate crisis uh, policy. But these are all names that are important for American citizens. As a world leader in many fields, America has a lot of influence in the rest of the world and it is therefore not unfit to ask what influence a Biden administration will have on South Africa, if any. Now, the political commentator and brand manager, Soli Moeng, said America should only get involved in South Africa and the rest of Africa under certain conditions. Sure, I want America to have better, good relationships with Africa, but I also don't want America to, to reward despots, to reward criminals in politics too. I don't want America to say to the Zimbabwe and Zanu PF, okay, we're going to, to, to remove the sanctions or the targeted sanctions over you guys. Those guys are wrong. The economist Davi Ruud said if the Biden administration will have any influence in South Africa, it will only be short term. Certainly, Biden historically has been a big supporter of the ANC, so politically South Africa should at least benefit from a Biden win, and like I've said, in the short term, likely benefit from certain macroeconomic policies that will be implemented by the Democrats. But I'm afraid, in the medium longer term, this will probably make it easier for the ANC uh, to implement certain policies that are not necessarily good uh, for the South African economy where Trump would have certainly put a stop to that, it's most likely that Biden uh, will simply uh, ignore the ANC if they try to implement macroeconomic policies that's not going to be good for the South African economy. So short-term good news, longer-term perhaps not that much. Political analyst and head of the Mapungubwe Institute, Dr. Oscar van Heerden, listed three benefits that make a Biden administration important for South Africa and the rest of the world. Firstly, between the neoliberal Biden and the, uh, you know, the neo-fascist Trump, I think we will all agree that Biden is indeed a better choice. Um, and I'm sure the world and South Africa will be for the better with the Biden presidency. Two, we struggled immensely with uh, negotiating the AGOA trade agreement under the Obama administration and we hope that 
uh, we will have an easier path with Joe Biden and his administration. And finally, we want to find cooperation between the United States State Department, FBI and other authorities to assist us as South Africa in making sure that we bring the Guptas to book uh, and return uh, the stolen billions uh, from the South African fiscus. Van Heerden mentioned one aspect that makes America important for South Africa as well as the rest of Africa, and that is the African Growth and Opportunity Act, uh, known as AGOA. When President Bill Clinton signed AGOA in 2000, African countries were given a competitive edge by providing unilateral duty-free exports for 6,500 products from Africa to the United States. Now, in choosing a regional approach for this trade agreement, Clinton empowered both big players like South Africa and smaller players like Lesotho. Um, and in many ways, this approach aligns with the trade not aid mantra. The president of AgriSA, Christopher Narede, is hoping that Biden will maintain this agreement. We've seen uh, the Trump administration uh, trying to protect American markets and we know that the AGO agreement was on the serious uh, threat during the uh, Trump administration. We hope and trust that the Biden administration will uh, have real appetite to be in business with South Africa and Africa. Van Arede is also hopeful that agriculture in South Africa will benefit from a Biden administration. And we will have to work very hard to uh, compete with the rest of the world to gain access to that market. We've seen some of our products already being exported to America, but I think the opportunity is now here uh, under uh, the guidance of the Biden administration to expand our exports and uh, to uh, gain greater access for a whole range of other products to the United States markets.